him that, that he's doing things incorrectly. If you're in a good stance, you shouldn't need to take false steps. Okay, here again, the real busy guy. You see, as he's key stepping, he's moving toward the line of scrimmage. That's not what I want, not what I'm after. <clears throat> well, I want him to keep his depth as he key steps. He's got the right read. He sees what's going on there, but I don't want him moving forward. Again, we're, we, you know, we're giving this offensive tackler, whoever it happens to be, a better angle on us the closer we are to the line of scrimmage. You know, and you can coach that with this drill. Very, 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 very good drill for a lot of these things. You know, here's another uh, guy that, that's a really good key stepper. There it is, very simple. You can see a lot of different examples of this. You know, great for vision, great for communication. I make sure that these guys call out the pulls when they see them verbally. Here's some older video of us doing this same drill during the season, you know, and you, you're going to see, uh, um, you know, you can, you, you, with your whole group of linebackers, you can get a couple of groups going at the same time, you know, spread your barrels out and so you're not wasting reps. Make sure that you've got a good rotation, uh, you know, this guy goes to the end of the line, this guy moves over, he moves down, you know, so that they, they can rotate on their own. You can just bounce from one side to the other and really rapid fire these things. This is, very, this is just very simply some man technique stuff that's teaching our guys to, and training their eyes uh, to when we're in man now, we don't want to see the bigger picture. It's a little bit different mentality. You know, our, we, we have man eyes, man mentality, and, and so here what we're simulating is a linebacker walked up on the line of scrimmage playing man technique on a tight end. We'll just give the tight end a bunch of different things. You know, uh, you, know you could stick a... Stick a a lineman in here, a defensive lineman with a, with a fullback, you, know, you give them those reads. Here this is all pass stuff that you're going to be seeing, all pass releases. But you can throw some run reads in there as well, you know, and, and all we're doing here is we're, you know, keeping our eyes affixed on the, the, the tight end that we're playing. And, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll let, you know, a lot of people play man technique a lot of different ways. You know, a lot of different types of man. We, we will generally have some type of low hole help uh, with our man technique, so we're always going to play with outside leverage, and we're going to allow this inside release, and we're going to be able to actually undercut these things because of the help that we have in the low and high holes. So that's why you see our guys doing that stuff. Okay, here's some more man technique stuff. Uh, this is uh, with guys in the, in the box. What we're simulating here is, is we've got two guys that are man on one back, and whichever way, whichever direction this back goes, uh, the linebacker to that side will have him man. The opposite linebacker will then play uh, in the low hole. And so uh, the way we teach this technique is we teach them to close, we teach them to shimmy, we want them to make contact with the back, and then we want to get our opposite arm on him and, and trail him. Okay, and, and, and I'll show you how that works. So we want to close to him. It's not a very good job of this guy closing to him. I'd rather see him take this path right down here and close to him. Get under control, shimmy, and then make contact and use your opposite arm. Now without pads, you know, this, this drill gets a little bit uh, uh, less physical. It's not a physical drill, but it can be uh, if you've got pads on. We'll do this against our backs too. Here's a better job of closing down the line of scrimmage. And why do you close? Well, you close for this angle route. If you just run out here assuming he's going to run an arrow, well, then you're going to give this thing right up. So we close, and we'll take it on. <clears throat> close. There you go. The next section we're going to talk about is block destruction and some drills that, we, that we'll use uh, with regards to block destruction. Now, we have some toys here that are... Uh, that maybe not everybody has, but I think everybody's got a sled in some capacity. We're, we're fortunate enough we have these uh, built into the ground, and and um, and they're stationary, so they're they're uh, you know they give us a great look. But what we're trying to practice here, always, uh, you know, these dummies are shaped like like bodies a little bit. We want to make sure that our left arm is right down his midsection, and our right arm is on the wingtip of his shoulder pad, sternum, bicep, hand placement. The other thing that we like to see is we like to see this inside leg up when we're making contact. When you got the outside leg up, sometimes that's going to get your body turned a little bit and it's going to reduce your force on impact. So that inside leg up is what we want to see. That's going to keep you square 
and it's going to keep you with, uh, with the ability to play this outside gap. And then we're always going to, once we make contact, we're always going to finish with some type of a rip, some type of, a, of an escape there. We don't just let them just fall off of that dummy. We want to clear the trash with some type of violent movement. So what you're going to see here is you should see uh, you know, the sternum bicep hand placement. You should also see with your head up there, this is not the, the best uh, technique here, but uh, we should see our head, our, the crown, you know, the, our forehead should be in the collarbone of, this, uh, of the man that we're taking the block on. This is hat and hands. <clears throat> and you're going to see some good and some bad. Here's a, a prime example. I left this one on. It's kind of funny. Uh, one of our older guys just getting stonewashed by the, uh, by the dummy there. Um, so you can see, there it is, right there. That's exactly what we're after. We want to we wanna make contact with our hat and hands, and we want to release. Not crazy about this when you see how his feet kind of die and get together. That's not the position that we want when we make contact right there. We want to take our inside leg and have it up, <clears throat> and we want to run through that contact. That's the position we want right there. The thing I like about these dummies is they, you know, obviously they retract and they raise. So, you know, you can really uh, uh, simulate the motion and the movement that you want. Look at this pad level here, perfect. You know, leg, leg level perfect. Very, very good. Good escape. You know, stopped his feet a little bit on contact there. You know, that's one of the big things that you're going to run into. Uh, with this drill is guys wanting to stop their feet. You got to tell them you want to run right through them. So here's another another clip. You know, hands and hat placement is very, very good. And then we'll do the same thing going the other direction. I'll just let this thing run. <clears throat> you know, sometimes when these things, uh, Sometimes when these things get uh, retracted, they don't all go all the way down. Sometimes they get hung uh, three quarters of the way up like that. And sometimes I'll leave that up there. Uh, it just makes it so much easier for these guys to take on these blocks uh, when it's higher. And that's a great illustration of pad level and how important that is uh, in the game of football, you know, especially with, uh, with stuff that's happening inside the tackle box. The next drill that we progress to, uh, and again, you know, not, I understand that not everybody has uh, equipment, but I, I know that, that a lot of people do have sleds. You know, the next thing that I want to do, and this is, a, this is a good drill, is I want to uh, take the hat and hands principle now, and I want, I, want to, I want to add a dimension to it. So I'm a coach standing back here, and I'm very simply going to work one direction or another. And we're, we're fortunate enough to have a three-man sled. You could do it with whatever you want. But I'm going to take two linebackers and I'm going to stick them in between these three dummies. If I step to the right, this linebacker is going to take this, this guy on and he's going to take the middle guy on. If I step to the left, he's going to take this guy on and he's going to take the middle guy on. And what it does is it illustrates a very important uh, principle of linebacker play. And that is you need to get your eyes transferred from your key to the person that is targeting you within the scheme. So if I'm a, if, what, what I mean by that is this, if I'm a linebacker and I look at the running back the whole time throughout the duration of the play, then I'm not going to be very effective in taking on a block from the offensive tackle or, or whoever it happens to be that's going to come up and block me, okay? What I want to do is I want to take my eyes and transfer them from my key, the running back, whoever it happens to be, to that offensive tackle so that I can get the great fit on him, the great sternum bicep hand placement, the great uh, pad level with my head, uh, that, I, that I always talk about. So what this drill does is it takes and it, it moves you, you know, as you key step, you're figuring out what direction I'm going, and then you can target your, target, uh, your eyes then on who is going to be targeting you. It's only fair that you get a chance to look at him if he's looking at you. And usually I'll go two pops at a time with this. So I'll send him one way, and then I'll send him another way. <clears throat> you see I step to the right, and there they go. Then I come back, they get reset, I step them to the left, and then there they go. <clears throat> so what we're doing is we're practicing getting the fit. I know it's a little bit more difficult for, you know, it's easier for the guy on the edge to work and escape, a little bit more difficult for the guy in the middle. But that's exactly what we're after there.
you can see him working, you know, working both sides. You know, I, I, sometimes I'll go two the same way so that they don't really know. You know, I want I don't want them to have any idea where I'm going. I really want them to go through the progression here and work the drill. You know, and again, you should see inside legs up when they're making contact. You know, not uh, not a great example here, I don't think. You know, so sometimes this uh, this dummy can turn a little bit on you. <clears throat> You know, again, I want them to run through contact. I don't want them to settle their feet and lunge into contact. That's wrong. A whole big process that you got to go through here. It doesn't just happen naturally. You can see really good here. Good pad level, good extension, exactly what we want. Again, these dummies retract. I really, uh, I really like that. The next step in the progression is, is taking it against live bodies. And we have a drill we call a triangle drill. All I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two uh, agility bags in, in sort of a V shape and stick uh, linebackers that will represent offensive linemen on each one of the bags. I've got a line full of backs and the rest of my guys are, are linebackers back here. And again, we're key in the bigger picture. This is a stance. You know, I have a good stance, good initial steps. Good key, I mean, good block destruction. This is the, you know, the mother load of drills. I mean, this is a lot of things that are encompassed in this drill right here. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand back here and I'm, again, just going to point one direction or another. And all that's going to happen is the back is going to work whichever direction I point. And the, and the offensive lineman to that side is going to very simply just step to the end of the bag. And that's going to allow the, the linebacker to come on, hat in hands the offensive lineman, and then finish with a tackle on the back. So a lot of things in this drill. Now the things that are going to go wrong and the things that you're going to need to coach on this drill are, you know, this can be a very, very violent deal. I mean, and, and what happens is there's so much going on uh, that this guy has to process that he tends to be a little bit soft. You, mean, you, wanna, you wanna set the stage uh, that this is going to be a violent drill. This is going to be a, a hard head knocking drill. And so, uh, you know, what you're going to run into if you don't set the stage like that is these guys are just going to put their hands where you're telling them to very softly. And, and, and you know, uh, it's going to be kind of a soft thing that's going to make you angry. So, you know, you really want to make sure that, that they know what they're getting into. The second problem you're going to run into is these two guys. These guys, if you point this way, this guy sometimes is going to want to go way out here. That's not what we want. We don't want this to turn into a big stretch type drill where it's going to end up out here. We want it to happen all within this little box here. Just step to the end of the bag. That's good enough. You know, make, uh, make the block destruction happen here and make the tackle happen here. Great. You know, these guys are going to start to stretch. In fact, you're going to see that on this video a little bit. Okay. The third problem that you're going to run into is these knuckleheads back here. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll go too quickly. And they'll be there before you're finished with the block destruction. You've got to make sure you coach these guys up to time it up a little bit. Give this guy time to finish with the block destruction before you appear. <clears throat> so here, I pointed this way. There's the block destruction. There's the tackle. There it is. There it is. Here again, a good example. I don't want this. I don't want it to happen way out there. That's not what I'm after. It happened right here. This is not a stretch drill. This is not a... You know, I want to work on the fundamentals of block destruction. I don't want to work on, uh, you know, chasing guys all over the place. Here again, we got kind of the same uh, issue going. You know, you can evolve to this, but I like to just start right in here. And they're all kind of doing it right here. I didn't do a very good job that day of getting that corrected, obviously. Like I said, this is not a highlight tape of drills. This is just some, some drills that were in an archive that I had, uh, you know, um, written up. There's some good, some bad, some ugly, and that's great. You know, I, I'd, I'd be lying to you if I said everything we did was perfect. You know, anybody would be lying to you if they said that. So it's, uh, uh, it just is what it is. You know, guys make mistakes. I'd rather have them make mistakes in these drills than, I, than, than on the football field. And here's a good rep. Just step to the end of the bag, hat in hands, escape, and tackle. It's a very simple drill, very simple concept. Great, great drill. <clears throat> you know, all the, the aspects of everything we're trying to do are, are encompassed in, in this drill and what we're trying to do. 
The next, the next uh, drill that we'll do sometimes is, is we'll work this, this drill, we call it a cage drill, where we're going to give this, uh, this can be a competitive deal too, we're going to give this uh, tight end or whoever it happens to be a great angle on the linebacker. And we're going to ask this guy to hook this, this linebacker right here, and we're going to ask the linebacker to cage this block, take it on, and get over the top of it. And, and it can be a competitive deal. Sometimes we'll do it for push-ups or sometimes we'll do it just for pride. But, uh, you know, we're really telling this guy not to allow this guy to get over the top. And you can see, you know, it, it makes it life really difficult here. But, you, you know, you, we're asking these guys to get good hand placement, work half a man on this guy and get themselves over the, over the edge. The next thing we can do is we can incorporate some agilities into, into, this, uh, into this block destruction. You know, sometimes what, what's going to happen is, uh, you know, guys can play drills really well, but when you start to add other skill sets into these things, uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Well, we want it to be like second nature to our guys, so we're going to do it on the back end of a whole bunch of other things that we'll do, a whole bunch of other skill sets that we can, that we can practice. So what I'm going to do, I just set up some agility bags here, I'm just going to have these guys go over the bags and then come back, working a little change of direction agility there, and then hat and hands a guy at the end to finish. Very simple. Over the bag, hat and hand and finish. Stick it in the ground, get a great fit, and escape. Easy. You could do this with a, a tackler, you could do this with a, I'm sorry, with a ball carrier, you could do this uh, with, a, with a finish with a, a catch at the end. Or you could just end it with, uh, you know, you could end it with a, a fumble recovery, or you could just end it with, uh, you know, you escaping off of the block, which is what we've done here. I mean, be creative in your drills. Okay, here's another drill. Now, uh, obviously, different setting here, but we're working block destruction from a different point of view. Now we're working on some agilities, and we're working on playing off of cut blocks. So here, you know, we're going over the bags. We're going to cut you on one end. We're going to cut you on the other end, and then we're going to scoop up a fumble to finish. Okay? The principles that we're, we're talking about with the feeding cut blocks are this. We want to get our hands down. We want to get our, head, our hands on the, the helmet of the guy that's trying to cut us, if possible, and we want to get our outside leg back. Now, why do we want to get our outside leg back? Because that's our target leg, and that's the one that they're going to be aiming for and trying to cut. So. It's a very easy thing to do if that's all you're doing. But now you throw in some agility bags, you throw in a couple of other things, you throw in the fact that they've got to scoop up and, and recover a fumble, and now it makes it a little bit more difficult to, to execute the technique. <clears throat> so that's why we try to get as much stuff going. Once they've got the skills down and know what they're trying to do, we try to do as much stuff with it as we can. Pretty good job with the feet. There you go. There you go. There you go. Got to bend here, recover the fumble. See, that's no good right here. This would be a, a, an incorrect rep. You see, his outside foot is up. So even though he got his hands down, he probably just got himself cut or reached. <coughs> he did it both times. See, that's a case of a guy going too fast through this drill and not paying enough attention to the details that we're trying to have him do. And that's why we do all this stuff instead of just doing a cut drill. Everybody could do it right there. <clears throat> See there again, the second time through, wrong foot up. So worried about the agilities that he never really got that. You know, some problems that you can run into here is these guys may be throwing that thing a little bit quick, which kind of happened here. You know, he kind of threw this thing before he was even through. I never was able to really get set. But still, it's a body control deal. He's got to have enough body control where he can recover there. Okay, taking it out onto the field. Uh, again, we're, it looks like we're in pads, but we're not. I uh, just have some, some spiders on there, but what I've done now is each of these guys is holding a, uh, it's roughly 25 pound uh, sandbag weight. I've got them in a stance, what I want them to do is explode out of that, you know, practicing low to high, then I'm going to shuffle them and work them, and we're going to play off cut blocks, and then we're going to finish up with tackles. So we're, you know, working a little explosion, you know, we're then bending to play off the cut, and then we're working low to high double uppercuts on the tackle. 